Welcome, Texan season ticket members, partners, and friends. Great to have you with us for this special call with Houston Texans defensive coordinator, Anthony Weaver, and former Texans player, Anthony Weaver. Well, Coach, how's it going? Good to see you. Oh, things are things are great. Things are great, Mark. I mean, you know, in this environment, just uh, it, you realize how much you, you take for granted. Um, mm -hmm. But it's well, been awesome to, to get this, this time with the family, and I just pray for all those who are being affected by, by COVID right now. I mean, you guys work so much as a staff, and this time of year, I know it's always hot and heavy in the building with OTAs and everything. What is it like being home, family, and getting all this work done as a coach at the same time? Uh, it's been unique. It's been unique. Uh, never have I had to, you know, I've never been in meetings and had my two-year-old son run up to me and, <laughs> and try and try to play with my uh, my controller. But uh, we're, you know, we're still we're still working. You know, we're working with all the technology we have available to us. We're still making progress and moving in the right direction. And I think as, as long as you're doing that, then, then everything will be okay. Great. Well, we have some questions from the season ticket members for you, so let's get right to it. Brantley and Laura, a co-question here. Congrats on the position. What do you think is different that you bring to the table as defensive coordinator, just in general? What do you think it is, Coach? Oh, man. Um, well, first off, uh, Brantley and Laura, thank you for the congratulations. Um, Two, uh, you know, me personally, like I, I'm going to be myself. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a calm demeanor. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a rational thinker, thinker and logical thinker in, in times of times of high stress situations. But um, I have the utmost faith in faith in our in our players and in the staff. You know, I'm very fortunate to still have, you know, Romeo Cornell on staff, who obviously has been a huge mentor for me, uh, has a tremendous amount of wisdom and knowledge, and and has and is not not afraid to share it. You know, but we have we have a really good staff with with Dent and Lynn taking over for the DBs, Bobby King, Chris Rumpf. We got the young young, young guys that are working hard, Matt O'Donnell, Akeem Dent, who played here as well, um, Deion Broomfield, and then all the players we got. I mean, we we got we got a, we got some really good players who I, I can't wait to just get a hold of and put them in some of these these new schemes that we're we're devising up. And but I, I just think personally that I, I'm going to be myself. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be aggressive. We're gonna we're gonna be sound. We're gonna we're not gonna be reckless, but we're gonna try to get after these quarterbacks. Great. All right, more questions here. Giles wants to know what impact do you think Ross Blacklock will have, your rookie defensive lineman? Oh, uh, you guys that have been around me for a few years now know I don't like praising rookies too much. But, <laughs> um, but Ross brings a lot to the table. When mm -hmm. you saw on film, he has the ability to to stop the run, to rush the passer. He's a he's a very uh, strong minded kid. And I think as long as he continues to, to put the work in, he can be an, an absolutely be a contributor for us in year one. Um, how much, that'll be determined by him. But, uh, but I have the utmost faith in, in his ability and his work ethic to come in here and help us an awful lot. I, contributor is a key word, right? Because you have a rotation going on up front. A lot of guys get a lot of snaps depending on the situation. It's sort of a group effort, right, up there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I was, you know, I was, I was in Ross's situation 19 years ago. You know, I was a second round pick that came into the Baltimore Ravens and, and started early on. So I'm not saying we're penciling him as a starter, but I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm saying right here, I'm telling him through this medium right now that he can get it done if he puts the work in. Excellent. All right, Arturo, will this season's defense be more aggressive? Mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, I've said this, I said this, you know, previously that I envision our defense being a reflection of our city. Mm -hmm. So I want a defense that's going to go out there and be extremely passionate about ball. They got to be tough. They got to be Texans tough and they got to be resilient. They got to be able to respond in the face of and be successful in the face of any adverse situation. And I, I think we have the guys on the roster to, to get that done. Excellent. All right. So Tim, Says, big fan of yours, Anthony. You were a real force to reckon with as a player. This is more of a comment than a question, Coach. <laughs> uh, but obviously you were a player and you played for the Texans. You played for the Baltimore Ravens. And I know you've been asked many times how that comes into play as a coach. But it's got to be an interesting dynamic when you're a player. You're fully responsible for yourself, part of a team. Now you're responsible for so many guys. What, what do you perceive as the difference, really? Um, I mean, Mark, it's no different than, than being single and then getting married and having kids, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, you just, you feel that you feel the pressure of not wanting to let 
anybody down. And, mm-hmm. and that's probably that's probably the biggest thing. When, when you're when you're by yourself, you, you control all of that. You know, you control how hard you work and how disciplined you are. Now you're trying to motivate and bring people along with you. And um, and while, it, while you feel that pressure, it's always something I've embraced. I've always saw myself as a leader, even as a player. So this isn't a this isn't a position or, or anything that feels unusual to me. It's actually something I embrace. All right. Well said, Joseph. What coaches were some of your biggest influences and why you mentioned Romeo? already mm-hmm. and uh, you know we know your history rex ryan i know you were asked about him during your press conference you were with urban meyer at florida right yeah, as a grad yeah. assistant as well yeah so I, I have a few i have a few and I, i'm gonna try to i'm gonna try to be brief because this is gonna be tough for me there's, there's probably <laughs> yeah. four guys and there's probably some i'm gonna be leaving out but my first is my high school coach all right blaze juliano who played defensive line in the canadian league and and actually talked me into playing football when i thought i was going to be michael jordan you know i was going to be six four six four two Michael Jordan, but um, yeah. but to this day he is still like a second father to me, and was a tremendous influence on me. Rex Ryan, obviously, just who I am as a coach, uh, philosophically, uh, just my from a demeanor standpoint with my players. A lot of that was was because of his influence. He was tough. He was aggressive. He was a player's coach, though. He knew when to have fun. But when we crossed those white lines, we were trying to take your heart. All right, and, and I, I'm I'm a lot that I'm I'm very similar in that in that way. Um, you already mentioned Rack. I've already spoken about him. And then Urban. I, I, I can't say enough about Urban. Urban's a guy who, who obviously had a tremendous amount of success, um, gave me my first coaching job at the University of Florida as a graduate assistant, and still to this day just offers, it, offers advice and wisdom whenever I seek it. So um, those, those are probably four of the biggest. And I, I know I'm forgetting people, but those are probably four of the biggest ones. All right, let's go to Hal. He wants to know about blitzing. Will blitz packages be more prominent this season? I, I don't want you to give away state secrets, but a, yeah. a lot of people look at the blitz as one thing, but you can do it in so many different ways, right? Sure. For sure. Um, uh, what I can promise is that we're going to do everything in our ability to affect these quarterbacks. The mm-hmm. game is the game has changed. It's not like when I played and people line up in 21 personnel and they're trying to get three yards in a cloud of dust. Uh, they got these quarterbacks now with the way the rules are. They're trying to sling this ball all over the place. Well, they can sling it, but I promise you, we're going to try to make them pay for it. Uh, you know, growing up, Houston, was, it was the house of pain, and we're going to do everything we can to try, to try to get some of that energy back in that stadium defensively. Oh, nice reference. People are going to like that one. All right, Alan, which rookies excite you the most? Alan, it's a rookie question. We can't do this <laughs> uh, considering the schemes. But you mentioned it. You're looking for contribution. You're looking for – absorbing into the system, assimilating as quickly as possible, right? Yeah. I don't, I technically, I usually don't get too excited about rookies, but mm-hmm. the guys that we, the guys that we brought onto this roster, they all have the three qualities that we're looking for on this team. They're dependable, they're tough, and they're smart. And, and with those attributes, that's going to give them a chance to come in here early and, and, and help on defense. Yes. But they can help the team in a variety of ways. They can contribute on special teams, which I think is a very, undervalued phase of the game you know mm-hmm. if they can come in and contribute there then they'll earn the right to play some more on defense okay let's get to leo's question what will jj's role be in 2020 on the defensive line or on the defensive side of the ball he wants to know all right so jj's role i would imagine very jj like yeah. <laughs> for lack of a better way of putting it yeah the, jj's role role is going to be to continue to get in the game and to kick somebody's butt <laughs> yeah. that, that is going to be rolling. We're going to do everything in our power to put him in the best position to do so. Okay. Uh, Mike, you've been called the disciple of Rex Ryan, who is noted to another blitzing question, question blitz all the time. Can we expect that? Well, and let me, let me piggyback on that a little bit here, coach. When we talk about pass rush, you know, we talk about JJ, all the sacks he's had in his career and everything, Whitney, but it's a by committee thing, right? It, it really, Carolina was second in the league last year in sacks and nobody had more than nine and a half or something like that. You don't mind where it comes from, do you? No, ab- absolutely not. Um, you know, the whole hope is that some of the new things we're going to do schematically because you mentioned being a Rex, a Rex Ryan disciple uh, will enable those guys to get some more one-on-ones, whether that's Whitney, JJ, uh, Charles Amenahu, Ross Blacklock. I mean, Jacob Martin, we, we can go on for days about the guys we have that can get to the quarterback. So, so it's my goal to, to put them in, in more prime opportunities to get that done. Um, in terms of, of being exactly like Rex, um, 
I don't know if that'll be exactly like him. I'll probably be more of a mesh between Rex Ryan and Mike, who has also been a, a huge mentor for me. Who's we're gonna be we're gonna be aggressive, but we won't be reckless. We'll be calculated with what we're trying to do. Sounds great, uh, David. How are you navigating the COVID nineteen situation with the new players? And I, you were asked about that earlier. I asked you about home life, but with the players, it is a unique environment. Everybody's sort of in the same boat here around the league, but. You get the feeling that, you know, hitting the ground running is going to be so crucial when you guys are able to get back together. Absolutely. The, the beauty is, fortunately, through through all these these technolog technological resources that we can still get the teaching part of it done. Um, mm -hmm. Where they're going to miss out is obviously just just the sheer amount of reps they can go out there and, and, and execute what we're asking them to do. And this game is, you know, repetition is the mother of skill. So there's no way to replicate that. On here, but at least when we get in there and they and they hear a they hear a defensive you know a defensive call, it won't be the first time they've heard it. Whereas if, if this happened back in you know 2002 2003 when I was playing, we'd all just probably be out on football fields running around having no idea what was going on uh, with the defense. So I, I still think we're able to get work done, and and um, they won't be starting from ground zero. Virtual coaching, Chris. What do you think about the defensive line upgrades this offseason? What well, we talked about, Ross, and, and just the guys in general, though, because you have good guys coming back. You got Angelo coming back. You have Brandon Dunn coming back. We talked about what Amena, who had a nice rookie season. I, I would imagine you're looking for that year one to year two jump out of him as well. Yeah, I, um, I, have, a, I have a lot of faith and belief in our defensive line. We have guys who, who uh, know their roles, who excel in their roles, and, um, and they're dependable. They're dependable, and you got guys that can wreak havoc, havoc as well. So, uh, when you when you have that combination of guys and guys who are completely selfless and are just just want to win, just want to win and do what's best for the team, mm -hmm. then um, then you got a chance to to be very good on defense and be good up front. And our our last question is from David: What are the top two or three keys in getting a defense to elite status? Mm -hmm. This is a good question. Two or three mm -hmm. keys, coach. Uh, that's 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 a that's a great question. I think um, you got to get 11 guys on the same page. All right, this our game is unique. Our game is unique. It's not like basketball where you can pass the ball to Michael Jordan and let him go win the game or baseball where you put the hands in, you know, you, you give it to to Cole, you know, and say, say go go strike everybody out. Uh, we can't do that. In order for us to be successful on defense, we got, we got to have 11 guys on the same page communicating at a high level at all times. Um, and I think we can get that done. We can get that done. Um, next, we have to we have to affect the quarterback. We have to affect the quarterback through through disguise, through rush, um, just through through pre snap manipulation. Um, it's that it's that chess match that happens before the snap that I think we can improve upon. That we can that we can get better at, especially when you're facing the Philip Rivers twice a year. Um, you know, guys like Patrick Mahomes. So I think as, as we get better at those things, if we can get eleven guys communicating and being on the same page. If we can, if we can win the battle pre-snap and not not show our hand, you know, not be the the the, the, the poor poker players at the table, yeah. then I think we can improve on defense. Well, coach, I think I speak on behalf of all the season ticket members when I say I am ready to run through a brick wall right now for you. So, great job today, and uh, it's been great listening to you and watching you, and we're looking forward to watching the team play come August. Thanks a lot for being with us today. Appreciate you having me on. All right, that's our season ticket member call with Anthony Weaver, defensive coordinator. Go to HoustonTexans.com for ticket information, all the information about your favorite team. Have a great day, and go Texans.